Hello and welcome. My name is Bashir Fadal, but on behalf of LearnITCoursesOnline.com, as well as LearnJobsOnline.com, I'd like to thank you. We do know that you have a variety of choices of IT training, and you've chosen us, so we really appreciate that and hope that you enjoy it. Thank you. Triggers in Salesforce. Just as in SQL Server, you can create a trigger, and the language there is T-SQL, so it's called a T-SQL trigger. And in Oracle, you can create a trigger, and the language used is called PL-SQL, so it's a PL-SQL trigger. The coding language in Salesforce is called Epix, and that is why triggers in Salesforce are called Epix triggers. These are distinct and available specifically for common and expected actions like lead conversions, for instance. Before going deep into triggers, let's look at some high-level information. What is a trigger in Salesforce is what we're going to talk about. What are bulkhead triggers? What's the syntax for the triggers? And some additional points. So a trigger in Salesforce is an epics code used to perform an operation before or after a, a record in an object is operated. These operations can be insert, update, delete, merge, absurd, undelete. So now let's set an example trigger on account to update the parent account when a child is updated. So we log in to Salesforce and click on setup next to username. On the second step, on the left-hand side of the navigation menu, we can go to Build and then Customize. On the third step, select the object you want to create, the trigger, and then click on Triggers. There's also different ways of doing the same thing. So we can go to Setup, and then under Find or Search, type Triggers. Or if we know the specific object, we can go through the Object Manager, select the object, and then on the over lower side, we're going to find the option of trigger. Or we can also go through setup and we'll find the developer console. And then there's an option to create a new trigger. So there's many different ways for creating a trigger in Salesforce. Continuing with this methodology, then we'll click on new button to start coding our trigger. And as we can see, here's the code, simple code for our initial trigger. And then, of course, we click Save, and we have the option of checking is active. When it's checked, then our trigger is active and executes or fires. And if it's not checked, then it does not fire and does not work. Next step, step number six. After saving our trigger, we can view the supposed changes by clicking on Show Dependencies button. By viewing the dependency, notice that update is checked or selected on the account object, specifying that the record will be updated when this trigger is fired. Another route of creating triggers, as we mentioned earlier, is through the developer console. So we log in into Salesforce, click on developer console. Once it's opened, we go to file, click new, and then select Epix Trigger. Now, in the developer console, we'll be prompted for name and S object. So we give a name for the trigger and select, in this case, attachment object from the drop down and click on submit, since that's the Salesforce object that we want to create the trigger on. At this point, we're ready to code our trigger as shown in the editor. Once we're done in the developer console, we're coding our trigger. Step five is to save the trigger definition. So click save and then close the editor to finish the setup. Now let's dig deeper into triggers. There are primarily two types of epics triggers, before trigger and after trigger. Before trigger. This type of a trigger in Salesforce is used to either update or validate the values of a record before they can be saved into the database. So basically, the before trigger validates the record first and then saves it. Some criteria or code can be set to check data before it gets ready to be inserted into the database. 
Now the second group is the after trigger. This type of a trigger in Salesforce is used to access the field values set by the system and affect any change in the record. In other words, the after trigger makes changes in the value from the data inserted in some other record. All triggers in Salesforce by default are bulky triggers, which means you can process multiple records at a time. Bulky triggers can handle bulk operations and single record updates, such as importing data, mass actions, bulk API calls, recursive ethics methods and triggers invoke bulk DML statements. So now let's dig a little bit deeper into the syntax of a trigger. The syntax of a trigger is very simple. So let's look at its basic syntax. It's trigger, trigger name, on, object name, between brackets or braces, the trigger events, between brackets or traces, we put the code block that we need. And the two backslashes before code block simply means that's a comment. So it's, if, if you have a line that is not supposed to execute, that's how we notate it. Now let's start with a trigger name. A trigger name is the name you want to give to your trigger. Let's go to the object name. Object name is the object on which the action needs to be performed. Next is the trigger event. Trigger events are the comma separated list of one or more events such as before insert, before update, before delete, after insert, after update, after delete, and after undelete. Getting a little bit deeper with trigger, we're going to get into trigger context variables. All triggers in Salesforce determine implicit variables that enable developers to access the runtime context so that they don't need to define objects from their side. So this table gives a list of context variables and their usages. By now you might be asking yourself, well, triggers seem to do similar things as workflows and workflows seem to do similar things as triggers. So what's the difference? The difference is Salesforce workflows, number one, Workflows is an automated process that can shoot an action which is based on evaluation and role criteria. With workflows, performing DML operations in the workflow is not possible. You can obtain a workflow over an object. You can create a query from the database. Now triggers. Salesforce triggers basically is a piece of code which is executed either before or after a record is updated or inserted. So it's not something that is scheduled, but a trigger is something that's executed strictly before or after a record is updated. More than 15 DML operations can be used in a single trigger. DML, short for data manipulation. More than 200, I'm sorry, more than 20 SQLs can be used from the database in a trigger. And we can access triggers across an object and relate it to that object. So what are some of the limitations of workflows that triggers in Salesforce can overcome? For example, workflows cannot create or update a separate object. You can't reference certain fields when using workflows. You will not have your workflow doing more than just field updates and emails. So now let's enjoy overviewing and looking at some triggers. This is a trigger. We named it hello world trigger on the account object. So before we insert any record into the account, this trigger, the hello world trigger is going to put a message system debug, which is hello world. Now let's look at another example of a trigger. This trigger will add a prefix doctor, which is dr dot, 
So all lead names whenever a record is updated or inserted. So looking at the syntax, it starts with trigger, and then the trigger name, which we named it prefix doctor, on, and then we specify the object, which is lead. But this time we place two conditions, which are before we insert and also before we update. So we have a before insert, comma, before update. And then list, lead list, which is equal to trigger new. And you can see the condition towards the end, which is since we aliased lead with the letter L, and that's on the third line for lead, and the alias is L. So every time we use L dot something, it means we're using, basically referencing the object, which is lead. So L dot first name, when this trigger executes, is gonna be equal to doctor plus first name. So we're changing the first name, if it's Michael, when the trigger executes before we insert or update to be Dr. Michael. Now let's examine another trigger. It seems very straightforward, but now the message on the fourth line has add error. And basically what that does is before we delete any record from the account object, it's going to place an error message on the screen that says you cannot delete the account record. Now let's examine this other trigger and we're going to find that when it fires, that the description within the account object will be set to new description. Now let's review another trigger. And on the fifth line, you're gonna see that we introduce what's called an if statement. So we're adding a condition. This will not execute all the time before insert or before update, but it will execute if that condition is met. So account trigger to set the account rating as hot if the account industry is banking or healthcare. So the account Object field value rating is going to be equal to hot if the industry is equal to banking and we have the double pipes and then industry is equal to healthcare, which stands for or. So if the industry is banking or healthcare, then the rating will be hot. Now let's examine another trigger in which in this case, it will create an account record whenever the contact is created without an account. Now let's review another trigger. As you can see in the code, we're able to generate an opportunity from an account that was just created. And because we needed the account ID to do this, we needed to use an after trigger. We also borrowed some values from the account itself to help populate the required fields on the opportunity. But notice we did not query for those values. Let's review one more trigger. And in this code, it will prevent users from creating duplicate accounts with the same names. With this, we come to the end of the session and we'd like to thank you for joining us. And also don't hesitate to visit our website at learnitcoursesonline.com to leave your feedback and reviews. And also look at our events. We have a lot of free sessions and we'd be more than happy to have you join at any given time and also sign up with us for our newsletter. Thank you and have a wonderful time.